Okay, so in this video, we're going to be sketching quadratic functions using the completed the square form. Now, this is going to allow us to find the maximum and minimum of quadratic functions. It's going to be a really powerful tool. And we can also use it to help us find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So first off, we are going to complete the square on this. So the way we do this is we just write the x down here. Then we look at the coefficient in front of the x, which is 6. We divide it by 2 and write plus that answer. So x plus 3, and then we square this. So now we have the square. And if we were to expand this out, we would get x squared plus 6x but we'd also get a, another constant. We'd get three times three, which is nine. And we don't have that originally. So we need to subtract off this extra constant that we have. And then we also need to drag down the plus one from before, that hasn't changed. So we can just collect the terms and simplify. And we have x plus three squared minus eight. So this is the completed the square form and we can use this to find out the maximum or minimum of the function. First off, let's just think about what the shape of the graph is gonna look like. We have that the x squared coefficient is one, this is positive. So this tells us that the graph is gonna go upwards, it's gonna point upwards and head to positive infinity. Secondly, we can look at the discriminant and this will tell us how many solutions we actually have. So let's go ahead and do that. If we write b squared minus 4ac, and then we have b is equal to six. So that's six squared minus four times a is equal to one and c is equal to one as well. So this is gonna simplify as 36 minus four, which is 32 and that is positive. Okay, so the discriminant is positive and this tells us that we have two places of intersection. So now we can sketch on what our graph is gonna look like. It's gonna look at like something like this. We're not sure if it's gonna be positive or negative, but I'm just gonna draw it like this. We can change it later if we need to. Let me just rub this out. Okay, so now we have two real points of intersection on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. And we want to find out what these are. And we have the completed the square form, but this is also going to tell us this point right here. This is the minimum of this quadratic function. Because it's going upwards, the lowest point is the minimum. Now, we have this squared term here. So this is gonna be always positive. Whatever the value of x, if we square it, we're gonna get a positive number out. So if we want to think about what is the smallest value this can take? Well, the smallest value is gonna be when this bracket is equal to zero. That is the smallest non-negative number that can uh, be squared uh, to give us a non-negative number. So we set this bracket equal to zero, and this gives us x is equal to minus three. So when x is equal to minus three, this is zero, and this is minus eight. So this gives us y is equal to minus eight. And this minus y is equal to minus eight, this is the smallest value y can take, because if x is any other number, we are going to be squaring a positive number, and we're going to be adding to the total. So this right here tells us where the minimum is. It tells us this position of this coordinate. So we have x is equal to minus three and y is equal to minus eight. So this is why the complete of the square form is really powerful. It tells us the exact point of the minimum or the maximum, depending on the shape of the curve. So now what's left to do is to work out the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. To work out the x-intercepts, we want to set this equation equal to zero. So the solutions, so if I just write it out, x plus three squared, minus eight is equal to zero. The solutions of this equation are exactly when, uh, the values of x of when y is equal to zero. So when we are on this horizontal axis. So if we solve this, we find the x-intercepts. So because we're already in the completed the square form, we're halfway there. We're just gonna move this constant onto that side. We'll get x plus three squared is equal to eight. And then we can just take the square root. So we have x plus three is equal to the square root of eight. And we also need to write plus or minus. So this tells us that plus square root of eight and minus square root of eight are both solutions. Because if we were to go back up and square, minus square root of eight squares to give us eight as well. So it's important to, forget, uh, to remember both of these solutions. 
Then the last step to work out the x-intercepts is just to move over the three onto that side. So we get minus three plus or minus the square root of eight. Now just think for a second, the square root of eight is less than the square root of nine. And the square root of nine is three. So this tells us that the square root of eight is less than three. So we have minus three plus or, plus or minus a number that's smaller than three. And this tells us that both these numbers are negative. So the shape of this graph is correct. We don't need to change it. And this tells us exactly what these numbers are. So the smaller one, which is minus three minus the square root of eight, that is this x-intercept here. And the other x-intercept, the one on the right, is minus three plus the square root of eight. You can also write this as two the square root two. That's another form. It doesn't really matter at this point. We only care, we only care about the shape of the graph and what these values are. So now we've worked out the x-intercepts, we've worked out the minimum, and all we've got left to work out is the y-intercept. And now the y-intercept is the point on the horizontal axis where x is equal to zero. So to find it, we're just gonna go back up into, uh, we'll go back up to the original equation even, and we're just gonna set x is equal to zero. If we do that, the x squared term goes, the x, uh, the x term goes, and we're just left with the plus c, the constant at the end. So this tells us that the y-intercept is just one. Now we have all the information we want about this graph. So we've got the minimum, x-intercepts, and the y-intercepts. And that's everything you need to know about sketching a quadratic curve.